Hi there, my name is Dr. Virginia Von Schaefer, and I've been talking about the technique of brachytherapy and how it can be applied to cancer patients in several of my videos, and I thought it would be really nice for you to meet the gentleman that I work with, Dr. Stephen Doggett, who's the radiation oncologist and a gentleman who has been specializing in utilizing this technique for many years. Hi there, Steve. Thanks for being with me today. Thank you for having me, Virginia. So, I was wondering if you could tell people a little bit about what it is that you do and so they can get a better understanding from the person who is directly doing it. <clears throat> the, the technique is, is brachytherapy, which is the implantation of tiny radioactive pellets directly into the, the cancer. So the radiation then is delivered from the inside out. Mm -hmm. um, rather than from the outside in as you get with the big linear accelerator radiation that's commonly used for breast cancer, lung cancer. So the side effects from brachytherapy are far less than they are with external radiation because the, the seeds are, are delivered inside the tumor and the radiation does not affect the normal tissue around it. Um, the tiny seeds, are they stay in, they're permanent, they're made out of titanium. You can fit two or three of them inside a grain of rice. Mm -hmm. So we can, we can implant these in many areas of the body, from the bottom of the skull all the way down to the mid-thighs, mid into any structure in, in the body, with the exception of the heart or the central nervous system. And we've also um, found that we can use this technique um, in conjunction with systemic therapies like the kind that you're using and that the radiation and some of the agents that you're using are synergistic to each other. So adding the brachytherapy to your systemic treatment can in many cases cause a better outcome than you would get with just one treatment by itself. Well, I've definitely seen that to be true in the patients that um, I've referred to you and we've worked on together. It's pretty amazing that um, people who have lesions in the lung or the liver, or other places that are even bone that are kind of hard to get at with just chemotherapy or other treatments alone um, are more uh, successfully treated when you add the brachytherapy. Yeah, we've seen that many times, especially with patients who have um, <clears throat> several bone metastases and there are some of those can metastasis can be very painful and to undergo external radiation to multiple sites would mean many visits to the radiation therapy center whereas we can treat all of these in one one sitting um, with the brachytherapy it, it is done under a general anesthetic so right. the procedure itself is, is not painful for, for the patient at all. Mm -hmm. And then um, how do people feel after they've had the brachytherapy? They generally don't have much discomfort at all. Usually um, any discomfort they may have from the actual needle puncture is usually managed with Tylenol or, or Motrin. It's, it's mm -hmm. very, there's very minimal pain afterwards. And they generally do not have any of the side effects that you get with external radiation like generalized fatigue, nausea, vomiting, those things don't happen. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's been very successful for people. You know, Together we've had some truly remarkable results um, we, we certainly <clears throat> have, and especially with um, some primary tumors like um, breast cancer, we have had several, several of your patients that we've treated with brachytherapy in addition to the systemics that you've given them without a lumpectomy or a mastectomy, <clears throat> and at one or two years uh, follow-up, they're still cancer-free. Yeah, I think it's pretty fascinating that in many of these patients, um, their follow-up PET scans and imaging uh, are read to show that the patient has had surgical excision of the breast mass uh, when in fact it just disappeared. That's exactly right. Um, <laughs> it doesn't happen for everyone and it's not <clears throat> the correct treatment for everybody, but in many, many situations it, it's very effective. Mm -hmm. We've had some studies published that show for patients who have metastatic cancer in both lungs from example, from salivary gland cancers, mm -hmm. where we've had follow-up at, th at three years, um, where every every one of the lesions that we implanted with radiation seeds, um, the, 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 the cancer has now disappeared, and mm -hmm. they're cancer-free in the sites where the seeds were placed. Um, we've had 
uh, another series that we published of lung cancer patients. They were both primary as well as recurrent lung cancers that we treated with brachytherapy. And the, the five-year um, local control where there was no cancer seen in those patients was 100%. So it can be used for, for lung, any form of, of cancer in the lung, whether it's spread from another cancer or, the, or primary lung cancer. It can be treated with this technique in addition to the systemic treatments that you provide. Mm -hmm. I know there is a period after the seed implantation um, that we generally try and emphasize patients to continue getting treatment to enhance the scopal effect of the radioactive seeds that are planted. <clears throat> that's that's right. We've seen the abscopal effect, which is when you where you treat uh, a tumor or a cancer with radiation in addition to systemic treatment, where other tumors that are not treated with the radiation, we've seen those disappear under under CT exam in the future. Mm -hmm. So it's a really fascinating thing, and I don't know. I just think it's really great, but I kind of wonder why many people don't do this. Well, there's a lot of a lot of reasons for that. One of one of which is that you have to be a radiation oncologist first, and then you have to do special training, uh, a fellowship <clears throat> training, like I did. I did a fellowship training in brachytherapy at the City of Hope, so it does take extra training. But it also takes uh, a personality that wants to do these under anesthesia, and it's a high pressure area where you have an anesthesiologist and an interventional radiologist, and you have the CT scanner. It's not like external radiation where you don't really have to go and, and do something hands-on with the patient. Mm -hmm. Another reason is that in <clears throat> terms of the cost to the payer or the patient, it is one of the lowest cost ways of treating uh, patients with, with radiation is the use of brachytherapy. Well, I think it's pretty amazing. And um, I think of the patients that have had breast lesions, and I think now there's about a dozen of them. Um, they've all done very, very well. Of course, patient selection is part of the process uh, and helps get a successful result if sure. the patient is chosen properly. Sure. Um, but I think it's uh, going to be a challenge in the future to even lumpectomy for people. I would agree with you on that. <clears throat> I. I recently had a new patient I examined and she had cryotherapy, the freezing, which you know, I know has kind of went in and out of vogue pretty quickly <laughs> because of the recurrence rate yes. at the site of treatment. Uh, but I noticed in this patient, the site of the cryotherapy was hard as a rock. And it was done a number of years previously and it never went away. Whereas many of the patients that we've had uh, who treated in this way, uh, the lesions are pretty much gone or a receding scar. Yes, and then the breast tissue itself is the, the, the mass that was felt originally. You can still feel a tiny little bit of scar tissue, but generally the contour of the breast, for example, remains the same. It's not altered by lumpectomy or, of course, mastectomy, which is you know, a much more disfiguring procedure. Well, and then, of course, if somebody chooses a procedure like that, then their option for reconstruction or uh, repair of the defect um, requires more procedures, more times under anesthesia, and less time living life cancer-free. Yes. <laughs> we, we've also seen um, that for patients that are having other forms of treatment, like like you mentioned, cryosurgery. There's also radio frequency ablation. There's microwave ablation. <clears throat> those those treatments in in the lung, generally, um, the effectiveness <clears throat> compared to brachytherapy is about the same. The issue is that when you have several lesions, like three, four, five lesions in one lung, to to use. Uh, radio frequency or microwave therapy or thermal ablation or cryosurgery, it's going to be difficult to treat that many lesions with any of those techniques. With the, the brachytherapy, we've treated as many as 20, 20 lesions in one lung in one patient in less than an hour. Mm -hmm. So the time spent under anesthesia for the patient is much shorter than it would be for any of the other treatments. Plus, you can treat many lesions many of with them. the brachytherapy. Yeah. I think that's the big 
point of comparison with uh, even the up and coming histotripsy, you know, the ultrasound um, procedures. And of course, then there are size limitations in these lesions as well. So, um, we I mean, don't we don't have a size limit in in brachytherapy. If we can get the needles spaced properly, we can treat very large lesions um, mm -hmm. successfully, and we've done that many times. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is truly amazing. What do you see as the future for this? Well, uh, there is there is research being done on using robots to actually place the needles and inject the seeds, mm -hmm. and in the future that may be possible with the use of of AI. Mm -hmm. um, currently, it's not possible, but work is being done on using robotics for this technique. Mm -hmm. Well, and then there's also the matter of who's going to get trained to do it. That's a very big issue because the training for brachytherapy in the United States has decreased a lot, and there's less and less brachytherapy being done because it is a difficult technique to learn. You have to practice it and do it frequently in order to remain really competent and good at it. Mm -hmm. Now, it was popularized in treating prostate cancer, um, and I guess that's not something that you do at this time. Is that correct? No, I, I I've used I use it for occasionally for patients that have a solitary prostate lesion. I can do that with a single needle implant. Mm -hmm. um, we can do that successfully, and we have done that. Um, so it, it's a possibility for patients that have once localized lesion, we can get a needle directly into that area mm -hmm. and treat it successfully. Well, that's awesome. Is there anything else you can share with um, the people here who are kindly watching us? It's a very effective treatment, and I would, I would emphasize that anytime you're going to do a local treatment for cancer, whether it's brachytherapy or um, cryosurgery or histotripsy, any of the local treatments, they require systemic treatment in addition. Mm -hmm. For one of the reasons we mentioned, you know, that the synergistic effect of uh, radiation seeds on your treatments, right. but also because anytime you have cancer, you're going to be shedding off stem cells and cancer cells into the circulation, and those need to be treated with systemic treatments. Yep, so there's always a difference between being tumor free and being cancer free. And the cancer-free part is definitely related to the microscopic component of the illness, which, you know, unfortunately many times people fail to recognize and, and treat. And I think it has to do with recurrences, maybe not in application of this technique because the recurrence rate at the site of treatment is so low, but there's always circulating tumor cells and stem cells floating around. and could potentially cause trouble. I would agree with that, that the, <clears throat> the excellent results we've seen in patients we've treated together <clears throat> is generally generally because primarily that the, the, the systemic cells have been destroyed by your systemic treatments and they don't go on to seed elsewhere in the body and cause other tumors elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, treating cancer can be fun, especially when you get a good result <laughs> and the patients are happy. Uh, but basically, I am so happy to know you and I admire your skill and dedication to taking care of patients in this setting because it's a rarity. I appreciate the same, the same in you that you're dedicated and have great compassion for your patients. Well, thanks. Anyway, thank you so much for coming today and I hope this little conversation of ours has helped shed some light on this very interesting and effective technique. Thank you.